On the topic of surface area, how do we calculate the area of different types of surfaces? So consider this cylinder. The height of the cylinder is H. If you break this guy down into smaller pieces, you have a rectangular region, and then you have two disks. The area is 2 pi r squared plus h times 2 pi r. So these are the things that you learned before. Some solids, some objects, they have nice area. You don't have to think twice. You just either memorize the formula or break down the surface into smaller pieces like this case, and then add the areas together and you have the area of the surface. If you have a cone, the volume of the cone is a third pi r squared h, and the surface area is pi r l. If you have a cylinder, the volume is pi r squared h, and s or the surface area is two pi r h, given that it is open. And for a sphere, the volume is four thirds pi r cubed, and S or the surface area is 4 pi r squared. So these are the objects that we learned in algebra, in pre-calculus, and they told us, hey, just memorize the formula. These are the formulas to calculate the volume and the surface area. Now in this class, we're going to deal with other types of solids, and we are interested in calculating the area of those 3D objects. So what are the steps? What are the methods? How do we do the calculation? Consider a curve like y equals to f of x on closed interval from a to b. f is non-negative function with a continuous first derivative on the closed interval a to b. So make sure when you're checking your function, the first derivative is continuous. Now imagine you're revolving the curve about x-axis to generate a surface of revolution. So this is your curve, and then you're revolving this about x-axis. This is the 3D object that you're getting. The question is, now that you have a surface, what is the area of the surface? We know how to calculate the volume. We went over multiple sessions talking about the volume, but the legit question is, how do we calculate the area then? So in calculating the area, the surface area for revolution about x-axis follows the following guidance. If you have a function which is positive, or in the worst case scenario, it is zero, and it is continuously differentiable on closed interval a to b, the area of the surface that is generated by revolving the curve about x-axis is we're going to denote this by s to avoid any confusion with any other mathematical concept. It's going to be the definite integral from a to b of 2 pi y, y is a function itself, times ds. ds is the length of the curve, which is denoted by square root of 1 plus dy dx to the second dx. So again, this guy is basically ds. In terms, you can write it as the definite integral from a to b of 2 pi f of x times the square root of 1 plus f prime of x to the second dx. So if you have a curve and you revolve the curve about x-axis, that object has an area other than a volume it has an area to calculate the area you're going to follow this formula
Next question is, what if we revolve this about y-axis? The surface area of revolution about y-axis can be calculated this way. If x is equal to g of y, and it is a positive function or a curve, it might be a curve, not just a function, and it is continuously differentiable on the closed interval c to d, then the area of this surface generated by revolving the curve x equals to g of y about y-axis is s, which is the definite integral of now 2 pi x times ds. ds is the square root of 1 plus rate of change of x with respect to y to the second power with respect to y. In terms, you can write it as the definite integral of 2 pi gy. Now, wherever you see x, you can use gy times the square root of 1 plus g prime of y to the second dy. So here I gave you two polished formula. If you revolve it about x-axis, if you revolve it about y-axis. You're going to go over other types of formulas and you're going to see how we're going to deal with those types. In this example, the graph of f of x equals to 2 times square root of x on the closed interval 1 to 3 is revolved about x-axis. What is the area of the surface that is generated So this is your object on the right. Here you have your curve, which is y equals to 2 square root of x, and you're going to revolve this about x-axis. Our goal is to find the area. So when you see question including a curve, this question might be about the volume, or it might be about the area of the surface. Make sure you apply correct formula. We take 2 times square root of x and we revolve this about x-axis. Our x is bounded between 1 and 3. So to find the area of this surface, we have 2 pi, which goes in front of the integral 1 to 3 of 2 times square root of x, which is your function. Time, square root of 1 plus 1 over x dx. Well, since f of x is 2 times square root of x, f prime of x is 1 over square root of x. So remember that when you have f of x equals to 2 times square root of x, it is 2 times x to power a half. And when you take the derivative, it is 2 times a half x to power a half minus one two and two they get cancelled out you get x to power negative a half or one divided by square root of x that's how you end up with f prime which is one over square root of x when you raise it to the second power it is one over square root of x raised to second power or one over x so that's why we have one over x inside the radical. Now, this is equal to 4 pi, the integral of square root of x, plus 1. How we got that? Note that when you have square root of x times square root of 1 plus 1 over x, here you can take the common denominator. We get square root of x times square root of x plus 1 divided by x. But in terms, you can write this as square root of x times square root of x plus 1 divided by square root of x, and you can cancel out these two. So that's why 
the quantity inside your integral is just simplified to square root of x plus 1. Then you can take the integral with respect to x. What are we going to do? We're going to use u sub. So u can be x plus 1 du is dx. So this integral becomes the integral of 4 pi, the integral of u du. In terms, it can be written as 8 pi divided by 3 times x plus 1 to power 3 halves, and x is ranging between 1 and 3. You can plug in 3, then plug in 1 and simplify this into 16 pi over 3 times 4 minus square root of 2. So again, remember that if you apply u sub, this guy becomes 4 pi integral of square root of u du, which is 4 pi u to power 3 halves times 2 thirds. Then you can replace or substitute x plus 1 for u and you get 8 pi over 3 times x plus 1 to 3 halves when x is ranging between 1 to 3. Again, you can leave your answer like this or use a calculator to simplify or approximate. When you have rotation about y-axis, s or the surface area is the integral of 2 pi x ds, right? Well, 2 pi y or 2 pi x in general can be assumed as the circumference of a circle that is traced out by point x and y. Okay. The curve as it's rotated about the x-axis or y-axis respectively. Then in that case, ds is equal to the square root of 1 plus the rate of change of y with respect to x to the second power dx or ds can be written as square root of 1 plus dx dy to the second dy. Two visualization for you. One object is rotated about x-axis, in that case s, which is the integral of 2 pi y ds. The circumference of this circle is 2 pi y. However, when you rotate this about y-axis, s or the surface area is the integral of 2 pi x ds. Well, 2 pi x is the circumference of this circle that you see just right here. So this is the logic behind writing these formulas and equations. So let's take a look at one example. The arc of parabola y equals to x squared from the point 1 and 1 to 2 and 4 is rotated about y-axis. Find the area of the resulting surface. So now you have rotation about y-axis, and this is the object that you're looking at. This is your curve, y equals to x squared, from x equals to 1 to x equals to 2. Now, in order to find the surface area, s is equal to the definite integral of 2 pi x ds. So what is ds in this case? It's equal to 2 pi x square root of 1 plus dy dx to the second, and then you take the integral with respect to x. Since y is equal to x squared, dy dx is 2x. Now you're going to take 2x and raise it to the second power. Uh, 
S in terms is equal to 2 pi definite integral 1 to 2x times 1 plus 4x squared. Then you take the integral with respect to x. Well, we're going to use u sum. u is equal to 1 plus 4x squared. And then du is 8x dx. So dx can be written as du divided by 8 times x, if it's easier for you to cancel out x and write everything in terms of u. So this becomes 2 pi, the definite integral of square root of u, and you end up with du divided by 8. Calculating this integral should be easy for you. This is pi over 4, the definite integral. You can convert everything into u, or you can leave it as x, and then substitute the values for x, whichever you feel comfortable working with. The final answer for both of them are the same. It's equal to pi over 4. 2 thirds u to power 3 halves, u range between 5 to 17, and in terms is equal to pi over 6, 17 times square root of 17, minus 5 times square root of 5. But again, please note that when x is equal to 1, and since u is equal to 1 plus 4x squared, u becomes 1 plus 4 or 5 and then when x is equal to 2 if you substitute that into the u formula u becomes 1 plus 16 or 17. That's how you find the range for your u between 5 to 17 but again you can keep it as x or you can convert everything into you and do the calculation if it's easier for you. Both methods work perfectly.